What's up guys, welcome to your 34th tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to create a visual table with our multi-dimensional arrays that we made in our last tutorial. So let's go ahead and let's just go ahead and make a whole new method to do this since it will be a lot easier. And go ahead and write public, static, spell it right, void, main, and um, actually it's not main. Give it a name like display or something since it's displaying your array. And in your parameters, since it's going to be taking in a multi-dimensional array, just have it take one parameter in a multi-dimensional array. Easy enough. Now in the body of this display method, we're going to need to write two loops. One loop is going to loop through the rows, and one loop is going to loop through the columns. And actually the um, loop for the columns is going to be inside the loop for the rows. So go ahead and write your first for loop and put int row or something so you can see that it's looping through the rows and just set that equal to zero and then put row is less than x length or whatever you use up here and then just put increment by one and now inside this for loop we want another loop to loop through the columns so let's put four and put int column o l u n n there we go equal zero since we want to start at the zeroth index, then you want it to be, let's see, column is less than x, because that's uh, what we passed into it, row, and then we want just the length of that. So what this would do is loop through um, the exact length, no more, no less. That's a neat little trick. So anytime you're making a for loop to do this inside, instead of just x length because you don't want the length of that you want the length of the row so that's how you do this so and then just put increment by one c o l u m n can't spell column there we go and this is your syntax for your inside loop set it equal to zero um, have it go until the end of the row and just increment it by one so now for the body of text we need for this is we just wanted to input or excuse me output the rows on the screen so system out print make a simple print statement and not a print line uh, because we don't we don't want to have it in rows and we don't want a new line every time or that would be a new row so let's go ahead and just print x row column and what this is going to do is take the index of row which is going to start at zero and this is going to start at zero every time and this is going to print out our rows and so let's just add a little um, spacer in between a new tab and this will just give us some space between our numbers so now that we have another row let's go ahead and just make a new line so let's put system out print line so here is the end I forgot a semicolon right there so here's what this method does the first argument it takes is the row number and the second argument it takes is the column number it loops through and, went, and what this does right here is it just prints a row and what this does is when you get to the end of the row it's going to move down a new line so you print a new row if I didn't have this it would print everything all on one row and I don't want that so that's why I added this so now we have a couple arrays and we have a method to print out those arrays let's make sure I got my uh, curly brackets in right there we go should be good so now I have arrays a method to um, print out those arrays now let's actually call that method so all we would do let's uh, make a print statement so we see what's going on print line and just put something like this is the first array and to call this what you would do is simply put display since this is the name of our method and you want to pass it an array so let's go ahead and put first array and again you don't need I spell array with three R's yes I did and again you don't need to put any um, number of elements since it already knows so next let's just do our other one system out print line and then just write this is the second array and then just display that too not the splat display second array there we go 
should be good so now let me run this make sure it works and I'll show you guys and take note in my first array there are two rows the first row has 8 9 10 11 second row has 12 13 14 15 and in my second row I have three rows with all different column lengths so now if we look at this visually in my first array what's actually said first array spelled that wrong has 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 in this row and again that's this in the first row and this in the second row and in my second array let's see what I got 30 31 32 33 four values in the first row this one in the second row and three in the last row so again that's four one and then three so that's how you print out visually um, your table in a multi-dimensional array so let me explain to you guys one last time how this works and hopefully this will clear some things up we went and we had ahead and made some multi-dimensional arrays using our two square brackets and kind of putting arrays in an array that's what multi-dimensional array is this calls the function or the method excuse me and what the method is or how it works is this um, this is just housekeeping stuff we wanted to pass a multi-dimensional array so we uh, make a multi-dimensional array we just name it x so we can use it in our method so the first thing we do this entire thing is a for statement right here and this just loops through the rows or the first ones and inside that you need to loop through the columns or the second one and then we went ahead and just printed it out with spaces in between and once we got to the end of a row we just printed a whole new line so that is how you do that and again what we did right here was called making a visual table using a multi-dimensional array so again just copy exactly as I did and once you type it for yourself you'll understand it a lot better but for now that's all I got for you for this tutorial in the next tutorial um, I'll probably do something a little bit easier but just as useful so thank you guys for watching um, I hope you subscribe to my channel and don't forget to check out my next tutorial